environmental nutrition defined. It's the interrelationships between our food choices, our environment, and our health. After we published that carnivore study in Science Magazine, Brian Machavina and Kenneth Feely wrote a response. They said, Ripple et al. claim that meat consumption by humans is one of the many threats to carnivores and biodiversity. We argue that human carnivory is in fact the single greatest threat to overall biodiversity. Now that is one major statement. Meat eating is the biggest threat in the world to biodiversity. So I called Brian Machavina, I didn't know him. We talked and then we talked some more on the phone. Then we started collaborating <laughs> on human carnivory, how it affects bushmeat hunting, pasture creation, grazing, intensive livestock production, feed crop cultivation. Then there's all these indirect effects. The blue ones all have to do with climate change. The indirect effects uh, shown in green are non-climate change effects. So the cascades and the types of impacts are, are huge. Lots of different types, soil loss. You remember the trophy cascades? We didn't even get to the, uh, the, the, the water issues. Well, we also added humans into the mix. Human carnivory affects human diseases, as you know, heart disease, stroke, cancer, obesity. And with 900 million hungry people in the world, it can affect food security. Well, we just finished publishing this in uh, 2015. So we made the bold title, Biodiversity Conservation, the key is reducing meat consumption. Let's continue on with this topic of environmental nutrition. Remember the definition? On the y-axis, percent relative to meat eaters, the vegan diet, the lacto-ovo lacto vegetarian diet, and the meat eater diet. So as we increase animal products in the diet, hypertension increases. As we increase animal products in the diet, diabetes increases. As we increase animal products in the diet, greenhouse gas emissions increase. When we put them all together, look how similar the diet effects are on health and climate. Well, my colleague Hans Diehl is illustrating here deadly plaque buildup from cholesterol in the, in the arteries. So I think of this, these arteries, as streams in the body. Dr. Esselstyn's angiograms? Well, we saw these earlier, the narrowed one is, the, I think this is for Joe, yeah? Joe's angiogram in 96, Western diet, nice and wide here, 99, three years later, a plant-based diet. 1990, a stream on Heart Mountain with cattle. 2013, without. So, streams in the body, reversing coronary damage by removing livestock from the diet, streams on the landscape, reversing ecosystem damage by removing livestock. This is called passive restoration of human health and planetary health. Human health without drugs or surgery. Ecosystem health without plantings or engineering. I think a very important thing to do now is for the ecologist and the nutrition health experts to start working together on these things about the co-benefits of plant-based diets on both human and planetary health. There's been very little done across these disciplines collaboration-wise. So I want to say that I'm interested in brainstorming with anybody here or um, watching remotely on this topic. Uh, let's move forward on it. Well, from a cow's point of view, we feel really guilty. The fat in beef and dairy is killing you people by the millions. We think it'd be best if we go our separate ways. <laughs> so in summary, it's simple. 
Diets that are good for the person are good for the planet.